or no, the Super Bowl is Sunday, matching up the reigning champs, the Patriots. I roll with the Eagles in their first Super Bowl appearance since 2004 when they lost to the Patriots. A Seattle man with ties to our Seahawks and the Philadelphia Eagles has written a memoir about his life with a Hall of Fame father who both played and coached NFL football over four decades. Born Fanatic, my life in the grip of the NFL is a must read for football fans. And we welcome the author, Michael McCormick. It's so good to meet you. Hi, Robert. Hey, nice to see you. Coming in. Well, I'm a huge football fan. Um, but I can get away from it, right? You know, in the non-season, you lived with it and the ups and downs of winning, losing, your entire growing up. What was that like? And I never could get away from it, as a matter of fact. Uh, my dad's career, as you mentioned, spanned almost 50 years, starting wow. with the Cleveland Browns as a player when mm -hmm. I was born, and then through Washington and Philadelphia, where he was the head coach, right. and I was in high school. Oh, wow. Oh, man, you must have heard it because the Eagles fans are so nice about losing or having a problem on the team. Well, best of times, worst of times. The first story from Philadelphia when I knew, as Dorothy would say in The Wizard of Oz, Toto, we are not in Kansas anymore. Right. We got a visit from the FBI. What? My parents did, warning us about influences of organized crime. So that was the start of the wow. adventure and the circus of Philadelphia. Now, were you there in the years where they throw, threw things at Santa at the game? That was before our was time. Before you. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I was, uh, I don't know if you noticed, I'm not built like a football player. I well, was a basketball player. Yes, you look like a tall, live basketball player. Right. Yeah. So I played basketball. My senior year was my dad's third year as head coach of the Eagles. And it didn't go well, I must say. The only surprise of that year is that he didn't get fired mid-season, quite frankly. But before my basketball games, as they do everywhere, we went out for introductions. Mm -hmm. I got booed, whether the games were home or away. Really? That said, my most enduring relationships are with my high school buddies who got me through that kind of weird right. period of time, to say so the least. So kind of the best of times, worst of times, exactly. as you mentioned. Yeah. So let's talk about your dad's time with the Seahawks. Right, right. One of our best memories over the entire 50 years not only was we're showing some pictures if you want to say anything about that but there's your dad right there he is there, absolutely so one of your and best memories those. so he was head coach of Philadelphia went to Cincinnati as an assistant came back to be head coach of the Baltimore Colts for a couple of years mm -hmm. under the rather infamous Bob Irsay senior who was a notorious drunk yes yes and that was even worse than our Philly experience in what way can you give us an example I'll, I'll tell you a story from his first year he was on the sidelines, dad, my dad was, and in the middle of the game, Bob Irsay, drunk, grabbed the headsets up in the box, ordered my dad to change quarterbacks. What? My dad tells the story, he took the headsets off, handed it to an assistant, and started to walk off the field mid-game. Irsay relented, assistant coach chased him down, brought him back, they finished the game, they won it. Good As a Lord. matter of fact, so did the players a, know anything about this? I, I'm not sure. Do you to catch tell you a the vision truth. of your head coach walking off the field? You'd have game? to think so. You'd have to wow. think so. It was a real circus. So that didn't end well. Mm. But one thing led to another. My dad's connections were always strong, and just so happened, uh, I think the the position was called director of football operations opened up out here with the Nordstroms. As the story goes, in 82, some of your older viewers might remember this, that was the strike year. Jack Patera right, yes. was the coach at the time. They played two or three games, and then play was suspended. During that suspension period, uh, Mr. Patera was busted for DUI, and the Nordstroms had to let him go. Well, they solved the labor problems. They, the league reinstituted a continuation of the season mm -hmm. for seven games, but there was nobody in the organization to coach except for my dad. So he came back, finished the season four and three. Interestingly enough, it was his only successful run <laughs> as a head coach. <laughs> well, I'm his so glad it was here. His only winning season, and from there, the rest was history. Chuck Knox came in, my dad went to the front office, and they had a great run. Amazing. Did, would you have had it another way? Wow, that's a, that is a great question. And when I started writing the book in the aftermath of my dad's death four years ago, to be honest with you, I was angry. Like any father and son, we had a turbulent relationship yeah. at times. I was also a little bit angry with football because it got in the way of that relationship at times. It took so much of him, right? It did, absolutely right. So much, right. his time, his attention, even when he was home. Right. 
by the time I finished the book, the discoveries that I made about him, his legacy, what I almost missed, because I tried to walk away from football after he died, and I didn't, and I'm glad I didn't, and football as the greatest team sport ever created, I learned a lot, and I wouldn't change a thing. Isn't that interesting? It is. I believe writing is incredibly therapeutic, whether it ends up in a great book like yours or it's something that's only for you. Um, I'm glad, and I'm glad you made that piece yeah, with thank it. thank you. So do you watch football now? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Are you rooting for the Eagles? You better believe it. Yeah. <laughs> And it, are, is that because you're an Eagle fan or because you might have a certain kind of feeling about the Patriots? I still have an affinity for Philadelphia, but the primary motivation is I'm rooting against Tom Brady. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I do not like myself for this because I do know he's a great quarterback and that they're a great team, but I'm so bored with this with the Patriots and, and, you know, being there and, and all the time. And he's a great teammate, too. But you're absolutely right, it's somebody else's turn. And how about the story if Nick Foles is able to get it done? I think that's amazing. Right? And I, I have to root for him. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, you know, despite the fact that the fans throw batteries at people, <laughs> that, that Philadelphia would be very happy with something like this. Boy, I'd like to be a fly on the wall, but I wouldn't want to be in the middle of that. No, definitely not. Win or lose, not. to tell Win you the truth. Win or lose. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting. Thank you so much for visiting with us. Great I'm, to be I'm here. I'm just glad things have, have turned out in, in this evolved kind of way for right. you. Thank That's you a lot. That's awesome. Super Bowl 52 airs right here on King 5. Please don't write me if you like the Patriots this Sunday, February 4th, <laughs> starting at 3.30 p.m. We've linked the full schedule on our web website, along with links to Michael and his book, I know you will enjoy it. Next up, get ready for the upcoming Olympics with an Olympic reading list. There's some great stuff on this after this quick break. Thank you. Yay!